jumping cars here. We are here with the 2017 Hyundai Elantra. Between the Tesla, the Mercedes system, who's you know second to Tesla, I would say, and the Hyundai, obviously the Tesla's first, mostly because it's software upgradable. They're always adding to it, and they're definitely pushing the envelope, for better or worse, in what it can do uh, in a production car. The Mercedes is still second, but the Hyundai has two distinct advantages. Mercedes, all it cares about is if the distance is too close. And what do you know? If it is too close, uh, it just slams on the brakes. Uh, so you get jolted like this. This system actually seems to be monitoring the speed of the car ahead. So it brakes as that car brakes. Smoother braking, it does leave, you know, much bigger space though because of that. Second way is the lane departure system. That lane departure system is great because the Mercedes one will pull you back in your lane automatically. The system's on and especially if there's another car there, it'll use the brakes to jolt you back in. This one, even if you don't have the cruise control on, as long as the camera can read the lines, it will actually start doing those micro steering adjustments for you, which is great because sometimes, you know, you might not be in a situation where cruise control can be active, but you do still want that assist. That leads me to a fault of the Mercedes system I'll be talking about. That's actually a safety per, uh, problem, and it's also a problem of this system. When either of these cars lose the lane markers, the lane lines that they're following, they don't beep, they don't flash, just the little green light on both turns white. That's the only way you know. Now I know these aren't systems where you're supposed to be using them to drive the car. And that's fair, but you think if it's doing its job and you have your hand on the wheel and you're you know, monitoring the situation, but you're letting the car make those micro adjustments that are just so exhausting, that's why these systems are great for you, you think it would kind of alert you in some way. Because if your hand's on the steering wheel, you know, the both systems will beep, vibrate. But if it loses the lanes that it's tracking and not steering itself or making micro adjustments for you, the only way you find out is when your car leaves the lane if you're not looking down at that little light or you know paying attention if the car is making those micro steering adjustments for you. So that's actually kind of a safety concern. So I hope you know both Mercedes and Hyundai would you know fix that uh, in an updated system. Not sure if the Tesla works the same way. I have my Model 3 on order, but that's obviously not out or here yet. Though I've driven Teslas, I haven't really played with that system a lot. So that's kind of my assessment of the si si systems. Uh, the Mercedes one gives you longer on the wheel uh, where you can have your hand off the wheel. And the Mercedes one, you can, as long as you are applying some pressure to the wheels, you've seen with the soda can video, or even just kind of holding your hand there, it'll register that as steering input and kind of go drive itself indefinitely because it knows, okay, at least the hand's on the wheel. Here you actually have to steer. So even if you're driving in a straight line, the system will say, grab the steering wheel after just 20 seconds. So you have to kind of make these steering adjustments that might not make a lot of sense in the Hyundai system. That's kind of bad. Uh, I hope they would, you know, just make sure that the steering wheel is you know, being moved in some way, not actually, you know, full on steered because in a straight line, it's just going to start beeping at you and you're going to have to do unnecessary steering. 